So for our year-long adventure, we have been saving very hard and our grand total is £6,000 each. So this works out to be £16 each per day, but as a couple, that works out as £32 a day, £225 a week or £900 for the month. We started to worry about our small budget when friends and family started pulling strange faces and asking, is that including diesel? Yeah, however, our minds were put at ease after we saw the Indie Projects video. They're planning to spend £1,000 per month. Uh, they're a lot more experienced than us and they're also heading towards Scandinavia, which is a notoriously more expensive part of the world. So after seeing that, we thought, maybe we're not too far off. Yeah, game on. So on to the good stuff. Let's see a visual representation of our first month's expenditure. Now it's time to dig into these numbers just a little bit more. Our largest and most unsurprising cost was fuel. We spent £432.42 on diesel. However, we did cover over 2,300 miles on our fast-paced UK tour. Our second biggest expenditure was food. £256.74 to be precise. Yeah, we probably need to rein it in a little and not spend quite as much, but I'm a chef. We love food. The third item on our list is another F and that is ferries. Uh, we spent a total of £210 on four ferries that we caught to Island Pop around the Outer Hebrides. Up next is coffee. Can you believe we spent £61.93 in cafes or in motorway service stations? Yes, and they also come with toilets and plug sockets. Next up comes eating out. We spent £58.88 on one meal, one fast food meal, one lot of cakes and a couple of portions of chips. Not particularly indulgent, but with a budget like ours, you could say it was. Bike maintenance cost us 36.98. My chain snapped in the Outer Hebrides and we needed the tool to fix the chain as well. We should have given the bikes a little bit more TLC before we left the UK, but keeping the bikes on the road is pretty important because it saves us money in the long term. Happy with that? So far we've spent £32 on one camping gas refill. And it will be cheaper in Europe. In our first month on the road we only used one campsite. We spent 30 quid on a three night stay. We spent £12 on an 18 kilo wash and dry but left with it still damp. We ended up having to take it to another laundry, spend another four quid on drying it which took the total up to £16. We spent a grand total of £15.19p on personal care items. That includes nail files, floss and also hair clippers. Uh, that's how Meg managed to do this to my hair and why I've been wearing my hat throughout most of this video. So far we've only spent £13.40 on alcohol. That included one trip to the pub which annoyingly didn't have Wi-Fi which is kind of the reason we went there and also a few cans to have in the van. Me and Meg aren't massive drinkers, so we've kind of decided to knock it on the head a little bit. We have spent 11 85 on postcards and stamps. We spent £6 on public transport. Car parking also cost us £6. And we spent £4 on miscellaneous items. This month being a candle and a pack of felt-tip pens. And finally, we got charged £1.80 for an unexpected toll. So we spent a total of £1,193.19p during our first month on the road. Yes, and in that same month, Cal celebrated his birthday. So family and friends had sent us along with a little bit of extra cash. 250 quid to be precise. And that left us with a slight overspend of £43.19p. Uh, we were a little bit more relaxed with our spending because we knew we had the extra, but overall I don't think we did too badly. It could have been much worse. Yes. We've paid for Flora's insurance, breakdown cover and our own travel insurance before leaving home. This meant that it wasn't deducted from our budget nor from our savings before we left. What we haven't included in this breakdown is personal costs such as phone bills, computer software or website fees. So we both found it very interesting to see our spending broken down like this and it might have been useful to start it whilst we were living at home to see where our money was going. Overall, I don't think we've done too badly, but 61.93 on coffees, nah.
So from these figures, we have decided to make a few changes to our shopping habits and explore cheaper alternatives. We're definitely going to be reducing our alcohol consumption and unnecessary treats. No more impulse buying. When we go to cafes, we must check the Wi-Fi is up to scratch before buying the coffee and making sure we use the most out of the facilities, plug sockets and toilets. We're going to severely reduce the amount we eat out. We're going to keep it to cheap eats and street food. We don't want to suck all the fun out of the adventure, but that does add up. When I do the food shopping, I think I better take a certain amount of cash so that I don't overspend and get carried away. We've also decided to travel slower. This means that we'll be avoiding tolls and hopefully we'll see a substantial drop in our fuel cost next month. We'd also like to reduce the amount of gas that we use, so reducing the amount of hot drinks and cooked meals that we make each day. But this will be easier when the climate's hotter. We're also going to stop buying fresh milk. Uh, neither of us are particularly fans of UHT, so on the continent we'll be going for oat milk, hazelnut, soya. Uh, these will last a lot longer, which means we don't have to run our cool box all the time off the solar, and also they're better for the environment. We're also going to be reducing the amount of meat we eat for exactly the same reasons. We'd love to extend our trip past a year, but we're going to need to penny pinch and we've also thought about finding potential income. Obviously we have our YouTube channel which does have ads on it and we have things like affiliate links with Amazon set up, but more often than not it runs at a loss than making us any money, so we do do it for the fun. However, if things do go well and the numbers increase then there is that potential to make a little bit of money on the road. Any money we do make here on out will go towards furthering our adventure and making it last for as long as possible as Meg said. So if you've watched the whole of this video thank you very much for spending your time with us. Yeah we hope it was useful in some way if you're planning to do an adventure like this or are doing something similar in the future please get in contact with us if you want to know any more information. Yeah, there's plenty of advice, tips and things that we've done along the way on our blog, which is at www.campcomforts.co.uk. You can get in contact with us by leaving a comment in the uh, section below here on YouTube. We've got Instagram accounts, we've got Twitter, and we respond to all of them. We've got email as well. All links will be down in the description below. As always, please feel free to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.